Well, I have to say, it sure is pretty. But I am ready for winter to be over. This is this has gone on far too long. I still, for the life of me, can't figure out how I used to flip a tarp off and sweep off snow and then sit there and work for eight hours. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to go back. Where your coffee, Mark? <laughs> All right. Okay, next I want to tackle the, the heater core. Oh, there's two of them. Oh, look at that, a little schematic. That's actually going to come in handy because we do need to swap out the blower motor. Uh, that's one of those jobs I do not want to do again. So this, uh, this shell was held in with these sheet metal screws, but I couldn't get at them from underneath. I had to come at them from the top. And they were awful, but that's out of there now. So now I've got access to the old seized fan motor. And now I can see why this guy's not coming out of here. It's connected, focus. It's connected on a hose down there. And then there's the, uh, there's the valve as well. It's a, it's a valve that controls I think how much heat you get and then uh and then it goes back out there so oh at least we're we're getting closer to where we need to be on this stuff so we'll try and get the old gear out of there and then i'll show you what i got from uh dirks so dirks they're uh they're a company out of the states and they uh they make all the parts that you would ever need for a 359 peterbilt and i'm, I'm still waiting for a sponsorship from them but until that day I'll just have to keep I'll just have to keep ordering parts, but they've got some neat stuff. So I got a new uh, door striker. I'll put that on later. Now this was uh this is one of the connecting hose that goes to that heater core there, and then I got a new cable, water valve cable, and a new resistor because I, I didn't know why the the motor wasn't going. So I thought I'd grab a resistor just in case. And this is that. It's a pulled open heater control valve. So that's what I was looking at there. So this guy goes through the firewall to the hose that goes down to the motor. And then this connects to the heater core. And then this cable connects in there and it just makes the adjustment of the flow. So we gotta try and get that out of there. And then last but not least, is the new fan blower motor. Oh, look at that, it's even got the connector on there. Yeah, that'll be nice. Okay, let's uh, get that old junk out of there and we can start putting the new goodies in there. So what was I saying last week about building trucks in the wrong order? I really wish I would have tackled all of this stuff when I had the interior out, because this is no fun. But like I always say, live and learn. Oh, there it goes. All you guys out there that are gonna rebuild your own 359s, don't follow my lead. Oh. Oh. Oh, one fan motor. All right, I thought I'd <clears throat> try and take this fan motor apart. And there's a little Allen screw in there that tightens against the flat on the output shaft. And it's pretty ingenious how they did that because you wouldn't be able to actually get this in there 
to hit the center, but they've got one blade that's got a cutout. And that allows you to get the Allen screw in there, or the wrench. There. I just tapered the end of the shaft there with the little grinder. And that allowed it to come off. Yeah, so what I'm thinking we might do is, this thing's pretty crusty. I think I'm going to throw it in a little sandblaster. Clean it up and then, then we can put that on the new motor. Uh, so this gives an idea of, of how challenging this is. The little resistor is tucked way in the back here. And a lot of this stuff I don't think was designed for serviceability, but maybe when the engineers that put this all together designed it on paper, they never thought that 40 years later someone would be trying to dig this apart after it sat in a field and rusted for a decade. Oh man, you can barely get your hands in there. There it goes. Huh. That looks a little toasty. Rusty and toasty. So we will replace that with the new one from Dirks. Nice. Clean all this out of here. I gotta get this cable out. And we'll clean this all up, wire brush it as best I can, and then paint it up. Because again, I was never able to get back here to paint this originally. So I just thought I'd give a quick overview on how this system works for for those that don't know. Pretty uh, pretty simple system really, and it's actually still in use today in a lot of newer vehicles. So if you remember the last episode when I installed the thermostat here, or the regulator, the thermostat is designed to stay closed when it's cold, and it keeps the coolant around the engine uh, held around the engine. So when it's firing away and warming up, it warms up that coolant, and then eventually this opens and allows the flow up to the radiator. Now, the radiator's got all these various fins here, and it's basically you're just increasing the surface area. So as it gets hot and the fan's blowing, it's pulling air through here, it's uh, cooling the coolant off and keeping it at temperature. So that's what the, the whole system is designed to do, that it gets the motor hot, gets the coolant hot, and then maintains that as you're driving down the road. So with the inside heating system, essentially you just get a, a line uh, coolant comes off the uh, the system and then goes into the smaller heater core in the cab. Now there's actually two here. The first one I believe is the evaporator core for the air conditioning system, but the second one's for the heat. So hot coolant comes flowing through here and then there's a little valve that we still got to replace that's up underneath there. So when you adjust your little lever, it pulls a string, it's probably all electronic now, but in the old days it would pull, not a string, but a, a metal cable. And it would control this valve and open or close it. So when it would stay closed and you'd have it on cold, it wouldn't allow fresh hot coolant to come roaring through here. But then when you flip it all the way to hot, it turns this open and allows coolant to flow from the engine up into this heater core. Now the way you get warm air in the cab is, you got this vent, this outside vent there. And again, there's a flap on there as well, controlled by one of your other levers and this cable. And that flap's either gonna let in fresh air or close it off and just circulate the air on the cab. Then when the fan motor's going, the fan's spinning away there, spinning that little uh, wheel, and it's gonna pull air through here. And it's gonna pull air through the hot, or past the hot coolant on this little mini radiator, and then it's gonna blow it up, blow it up the vent, and then depending on which way you've got this, this guy set, it controls a flap that's either gonna send heat out this guy to, the, to your feet, or upstairs to the, to the window. And that's basically it, it's a, it's a very simple system. And that's how you get warm air in the cab or, or cool air in the summer, but 
again, we'll get into air conditioning in, on another episode. That's going to be a, a whole other project because we got to add a condenser in front of the radiator and probably a new compressor and then we'll have to charge the system. So again, worry about that for another day for now. That's the air conditioning, but it's sure going to be nice to have heat. And it's again, very simple, but you need all the pieces to be working. And I didn't have the fan working and I didn't have any hot coolant because there was no thermostat. So this truck was cold to drive last fall, but we're going to fix that by the end of the episode. Come on. Oh, there it goes. Oh. Okay. Here's the old valve. Oh, and sure enough, completely seized. Yeah. Okay. So I just got to steal this bracket off of here and screw that in. And then I should be able to put this new valve on. Slick. Come on. Okay, this should just come out of here now. Oh, dirty. Yeah, so we weren't getting a lot of airflow through that guy. Dented up there, but I don't see any other leaks. Just clean that up and blow it out. And then, then the air can flow through there and Give us warm air inside the cab. Oh, gross. Okay, so while I wait for the, all that paint to dry, I figured I'd put together this, this new motor. Yeah. So the reason I did it with a paintbrush instead of a roller, or a roller, instead of a spray gun, is because I didn't want to get uh, overspray all over the interior. And again, as I mentioned before, it probably would have been best to do all that work when the interior was taken apart, but oh well, live and learn. Okay, come on. Hmm. Needs a little persuasion. Put in a little grub screw. And that locks it against the flat on the motor shaft. Okay, now what I wanted to do was let's power it up with a battery and see if it actually works. We'll just take the plug off the old one. Something like that. I don't know if the battery charger is going to actually make this work but we'll we'll give it a go oops okay that was a fire waiting to happen inside the truck okay that's why when you restore a truck you kind of want to dig into just about everything it's over 40 or 50 years a lot of people put their own little spin and fixes. Okay, so positive. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so is that turning the right way? Yes, it is. So the cups are scooping the air. That's slick. Okay, Mark, stop playing. 
So next, if you recall from the last episode, again, still waiting for that, that wet paint to dry in there. So I thought I'd fix this up. But in the last episode, I was going to be putting, I was going to put this wire back on the uh, power or the charge wire from the alternator to the battery. And the stud was stripped. And as I was turning it, it actually broke this off. So I took this cover plate off and you could see that this was just rotten and ready to fall off anyway. So I actually, I called Peterbilt uh, and uh, my friend Aaron there, he said that he can give me a replacement with core. I think it was $700. It was really expensive. So he suggested I contact Smith Electric. It's a little electric supply company on the west end of Edmonton. And they were actually able to take the part number off of this and get me the exact parts I needed. So a new little uh, condenser and a new wire and post. So we're able to limp this alternator through a little longer. For now we're just gonna, we're gonna patch it together because it was working. So there's no need to fix something that ain't broke. Well, in this case we need to fix this, but the internals were still working. So we'll go ahead and clean this up and swap these wires out. And uh, I need to solder a new end on this as well. Okay, I think what I can do now is start, I can put the, the hose back on the turbo because all that's left here is two hoses on the outside. So this is from the water pump and this would be the pressure line that goes to the water valve at the bottom of the heater core. So we can put that on and then where it comes out of the top of the heater core, it comes out of there, goes into this hose and then goes back to the heater core in the, in the bunk. So I think I can put this on here because that's all that's really left under the hood. Well, that and obviously filling the coolant and seeing how many leaks we have. Okay, don't tell, uh, don't tell Mrs. Twin Sticks, but I actually used the laundry sink to clean that out. Actually turned out not too bad. <laughs> okay, so I found another use for Noiko insulation. Now there's probably a, a Peterbilt part number you can use for this, but I was looking around my shop and I think Noiko is gonna work just fine. Something like that. All right, let's go put this, put this bad boy back in the truck. All right, so I've been putting this job off as, as long as possible. So I've got to somehow get that little hose connected on there. And I'm only going to have a half inch or three quarters of an inch of space to do it. So I can push it on from the outside. But then the other problem is I got to get this guy on the other side of the hose. And the engineers were kind of smart. Or at least when someone probably said, well, how are they going to tighten that nut up? So they, they came up with a little door that you flip down so you can get at the so you can get at the screw to tighten that. But again, I'm not looking forward to this job. So I'm gonna try and come up with as much zen as I can and not get mad and throw this thing across the shop. Ah, uh, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Just a little bit of a challenge, but eventually I got it in. I still gotta uh, tighten those hose clamps up. But one of the other challenges is, so when this truck was sitting in the field, this uh, passenger window was open. So snow and rain was blowing in and then uh, dribbling down the dash there and rusting everything in behind, including these, the little nuts there. So when I went to take the old valve off and got the wrench in, they just broke right off. So I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is spark up the welder and I'll just give a little zap to each of them just to hold that valve in place from, from moving around. <laughs> Ah. Ah. Yeah, that fire blanket's working good. Okay. Ow. Ooh. 
I'm not the prettiest, but it'll work. All right, we're making some progress now. It's been quite the, quite the project. Put you down like that for now. Goes in easier than it came out. Okay, so uh, let's hook some of this stuff back up and see if see if the fan works or if I got some wiring to do. Yeah, everything's just such, such a tight, stupid spot. There it goes. Okay. Uh, which one on? Oh, I wonder if I need to turn the key on. Still nothing. Hmm. <laughs> well, that wire's missing. That might be part of it. Okay. How about that? Come on. Nothing. Oh, that's right. I forgot. I'm forgetting lots of stuff here. Coping with senility. Okay. How about now? Ha <laughs> mint! Oh, there go all my walnut shells. <laughs> oh, lovely. It's, it's raining walnut shells. <laughs> okay, well, at least it works. That's good. Sweet. Success. Okay, so now I'll put this cover plate back on, try and pin up all these wires. I got to reconnect all the little uh, the cables for the, the flaps, and then I think we're ready to add some coolant and start this old girl back up. Right on. <laughs> I do not want to do that again. I won't bore you with the details, but let's just say it was a lot of work. <laughs> trying to get in there and get all the wires connected and the screws on but it's done now so that's uh that's cool uh, i left the cover off the heater core because i want to when i finally get it fired up i want to see if it's leaking out of that connection and then of course the valve underneath but with that i think we're done on the inside so the only thing left to do is to uh throw some coolant in it and fire it up Okay, coolant's in. There was a slight, it was sweating a little from the, from the silicone hose on the, on the main drop off the radiator, so I tightened that up and it seems to be not dripping anymore. I don't see any other leaks, so let's go ahead and fire it up, see what happens. Temperature. 
I'm gonna try and blow all these walnut shells and junk out of here. If they have it outside. And if you're wondering, well, why does he have walnut shells everywhere? Well, the main reason was back in the day before I put this fiberglass roof cap on, I started blasting with uh, walnut shells. Alright, it's a, it's a nutty Saturday. Instead of sand, I gave that a try on the top and all those shells just kind of went down and, and have been hiding in behind in the HVAC system. Oh, looking good. Well, another project off the list. That's for sure. We'll see cooling spraying out underneath the truck. And you're probably wondering, well, didn't this video start with a whole bunch of snow? <laughs> And yes, it did. And for a variety of reasons. It's the way she goes. Sometimes she goes, sometimes it doesn't. She didn't go. It's the way she goes. This particular project has taken me more than a few Saturdays, so I think spring has finally sprung and things are starting to melt, so that's cool. And it's starting to warm up. So don't tell Mrs. Twin Sticks, but I borrowed her meat thermometer. We'll just put that in there. And what are we at now? 62? 65, 66, well it seems to be warming up, but we'll, we'll let it sit there for a minute. When this gets hot, we should see that up around. Oh, it's already at 71. Is this thing already warming up? Oh, all right. Oh, it seems to have topped out at 73. So we'll, we'll leave that there for a bit and come back and see if it goes even higher. Every time I look at this truck, it makes me smile. Every single time. Okay, what do we got? Oh, 85. Nice and toasty. <laughs> oh, right on. Right on. Well, that was a lot of work, but it's worth it. So now I finally have heat in here. So with that, I think we're gonna wrap up the episode and Hope you enjoyed, hope you enjoyed following along and uh, thanks for watching and don't ever forget, if you got it, a trucker brought it.